Well, welcome everyone to uh, tonight's uh, Aquinas lecture series. Uh, my name is Dave Hebert. I am the chair of the economics department here at Aquinas. And we are joined actually by my predecessor, uh, Dr. Todd Yarbrough of Pace University. Uh, Dr. Yarbrough uh, was an economics professor here at Aquinas for five years, I think. Four years, yeah. Four years, yep. So, ha, I outlasted you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Yarbrough. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, and, and, you know, uh, a big thanks, uh, obviously, to uh, Professor Her uh, Hebert for, for inviting me. I was really excited to, you know, come back in a way, you know, even if virtually. Um, Aquinas is, uh, you know, will always be a very, very special place. I, I really uh, enjoyed my time there. I, I liked, I, in, you know, the mission and everything. It was just a really nice experience. And I believe very much in the types of, of colleges that Aquinas represents. And, and it was just, you know, nice to kind of um, be in that vibe for a while. So yeah, thank you for having me back. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, sort of jump right into it. Um, what I'm going to be talking about, well, I'm going to sort of, you know, probably talk broadly about, you know, the con context of sort of uh, natural disasters and, and economics. Um, I've been doing, uh, I kind of got into natural disaster research, um, I don't know, three or four years ago uh, when I, you know, I'm mostly a public finance uh, economist. Most of my research is in state level budgeting uh, issues. And, um, you know, I was just thinking like, well, let's look at, you know, whether uh, natural disasters affect state budgets and, and to what extent do they, they uh, affect state budgets. And that kind of, you know, got me into this lane where, you know, you get into a research area and you realize that uh, hopefully at least you realize that there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, and, and a lot of uh, holes in the literature. And so, uh, you know, the paper that I'm going to talk about tonight is a, is a paper um, that I wrote with a, a couple of co-authors where we, we, you know, looked at sort of, um, you know, what is not known necessarily about the effect of natural disasters? Like, what do we not know in, in an economic sense? Uh, well, there's actually a lot of things we don't know. Um, it's, it's interesting, um, given how important and how much we talk about natural disasters, um, that uh, we, you know, the research on them is, is really interesting, and it's sort of still like developing itself uh, and, and sort of, you know, coming around to some, some really uh, cool and interesting things. So what we were interested in uh, was, you know, what is the effect of, of natural disasters on entrepreneurship? And this is interesting because it was sort of before, you know, COVID, this was back in 2019 when we first started to develop the paper. Uh, and the, here's a good lesson to students, you know, I've been working on this paper now for <laughs> since 2019, it's, it's still not published. And, you know, it's, it's under review currently, which is, which is nice, but um, yeah, research takes a long time. But it was before, you know, when COVID hit, there was this interesting thing that happened where people talked about entrepreneurship and, and COVID kind of forcing people into, into entrepreneurship, which uh, actually, as we were writing the paper, really kind of helped us to sort of wrap our head around what were really kind of our findings, because our findings were, um, I guess, counterintuitive in a way, but they were they were definitely different than what, you know, my co-authors and I were, went into it expecting. So that's the one nice thing about the paper is that you get some results, which um, maybe not everyone can, can sort of predict. Um, so yeah, there's a, we're not going to go through the table of contents. <laughs> so, um, you know, why does this matter? You know, it, it may seem superfluous to discuss the importance of natural disasters, but, you know, it, it bears some, some commentary, but the fact is, is that disaster damages are increasing um, over time. Now, I have a, a trend line I'm going to show you in a second. Actually, I can just, uh, well, I'll show it to you in a second, but, uh, you know, that, that verbiage there, that trends, uh, damage trend is increasing over time is a little bit, it's, it's caveated by the fact that the trend is being pulled up by large events. So the, the, the number of events is increasing, like the number of disasters is increasing, but like the average size of those disasters isn't necessarily uh, increasing. But what is increasing are these like big events. Um, your Hurricane Andrews, your uh, back in 92, your Hurricane Katrina, uh, your Superstorm Sandy, these events are happening a little bit more frequently than we've historically seen in the data. And so that that's where you get that that damage trend sort of going up over time. But but 
even if disasters just were like the same level, even if they weren't increasing in frequency or severity, the fact is, is that, you know, population growth and, and residential development and commercial development means that, you know, if your country is growing economically, disasters are, are, are going to they're going to get more expensive um, just by virtue of the economics kind of going around. So, you know, that, that in and of itself is, is helping to, to explain some of it, at least. Um, and then, of course, there's the climate change effects, which, uh, you know, are, are fairly uh, found in, in the relative literatures. Um, uh, you know, another concerning thing is that uh, U.S. economic dynamism is declining. So what do we mean that by dynamism? What we mean is that think about the, the relative ability of uh, an economy um, to sort of um, be flexible in terms of how it meets relative demands. So if you think about firms and businesses uh, and how they meet the, the demands of consumers and, you know, satisfy that uh, feedback loop in an economic system, the U.S., uh, you know, dynamism has been declining. Our, our economy is a little stagnant. It's not growing in the ways it used to grow. The number of small businesses, uh, you know, uh, tends to be declining. Uh, and, and a lot of this has to do with market consolidation, but also barriers to entry. Um, I live in New York City, um, and I don't even understand how you can run a small business here. It, it makes Makes virtually no sense to me, um, purely just from the barriers to entry. And, and for small business and entrepreneurial activity, you know, these are, are very big issues. Um, and so, you know, that's a concern is the, the, how is the U.S. economy kind of, you know, if you took its temperature, uh, okay, you look at GDP growth, it looks pretty good. But, you know, then you start listening to the heart, then you start doing the blood pressure. And yeah, it's, there's some there's little concerns here and there. And, and dynamism is, is one that I, we probably should be talking more about. And it's actually a really interesting uh, literature that's kind of blown up uh, in recent years. Um, and entrepreneurship is economically important. In fact, um, there have been a lot of research which suggests that uh, entrepreneurship and, and small business formation have an outsized economic effect, meaning that a dollar in entrepreneurial activity, uh, it, it matters more than say a dollar of, of you know, corporate growth. Uh, which, you know, to, in a certain sense makes a lot of sense, but I think speaks to the, the nature of how the U.S. economy has evolved over time uh, to be an economy which is very, very large and very, very, uh, you know, good at producing uh, a lot of wealth, but that that wealth, uh, as well as business activity, is being more and more concentrated in particular areas. And, you know, that's, that's certainly a, a relative concern, um, especially as it pertains to that, that ability to, to have entrepreneurial activity, which is, you know, it, beyond it being kind of a, a, a good thing and, and something that sounds good, it's also materially important um, to the health of the economy long term. Um, so this is just like if you just added up all disaster damages over time uh, for all U.S. states. So, so the study looks at explicitly at U.S. states. Uh, this is what it looks like. So when you hear, you know, disasters are getting more damaging and, and things like that, what people are really speaking to is that those big events are getting more spiky. So the, the, there's volatility in the numbers uh, a little bit. So I, I think it's always interesting when um, uh, you can uh, sort of um, look at a graph like this and, and know, you know, the stories are there, right? So if you look at like 92, that's Hurricane Andrew. You look at 2005, that's Hurricane Katrina. I mean, these are all the natural disasters that occurred in the U.S. in any given year added up. But this shows you how important those singularly big events are. Um, and, and ultimately, that ends up being something that we, we consider in the context of our research is, well, what is the effect of these big disasters? Um, one of the more interesting things that we, that was, you know, very surprising to me when I first got into entrepreneurship research, I'm sorry, natural disaster research. When I first looked at do natural disasters affect uh, state spending uh, and state debt and things like that, uh, I found actually that it, they don't generally, that, that every dollar of disaster damage does not seem to causally matter to the spending that a state has. Um, but if you look at the big disasters, the really, really big ones, they do. So in a way, um, we, you know, we're always kind of juxtaposing all of the natural disasters that occur. And what is considered a natural disaster, by the way, is, is more broad than most people realize. Um, but ultimately, you know, it does kind of follow that story of the big events and, and th those end up having, you know, outsized economic effects and, and things like that. So they're, they're part of the story, certainly. Um, and then just this is all the damages added up for the U.S. states. So it gives you an idea of where damages are occurring. 
There's nothing very surprising about uh, this, this map, except for uh, a lot of people would perhaps be surprised by the plain states um, experiencing a lot of disaster damage. Um, that's a combination of, of thunderstorms, tornadoes, but then also droughts. Um, and, and, you know, droughts out in California as well, and, and also in terms of earthquakes and things like that. Um, you know, what you sort of get a sense when you look at a map like this is that, um, you know, what natural disasters probably matter the most in terms of their effect. Um, hurricanes uh, and, and those sort of coastal events matter a lot because they're not only wind events, they're also rain events, they're flooding events. Um, you know, they cause power outages and, and fires. And, and so hurricanes, um, you know, are, are, you know, broader uh, and their impacts are a little bit broader. So therefore, when you look at the U.S. states, uh, the damages are higher there. But also, you know, you have to ask yourself how much of this is because we put very expensive to live cities right on coastlines. And, and that's where these disasters are occurring as well. Um, so, yeah, it, it's sort of a story of disasters are happening probably where you think they are. Um, so what is the literature said about, you know, natural disasters and entrepreneurship? Um, not a whole lot really, but, but what has it said? Well, when you look at country level studies, uh, a couple things kind of come out. First off, uh, again, big disasters matter. Small disasters, um, don't seem to have much uh, of any effect on entrepreneurial activity. Um, but development ma really matters as well. Um, so if you have a developed economy, your economy is, is much better able to withstand the negative economic consequences of a disaster. Um, you probably also, uh, these countries tend to have uh, relatively good governance structures. And so their aid structures and, and how they, you know, uh, clean up and repair the localized areas uh, are, are more sophisticated than, than less developed economies. And so that matters as well. So it's, it's not just the effect of a, of a disaster on entrepreneurial activity. It's also the effect of a disaster in the context of the, the economic system, the political system. Um, one of the things that, that we believe is, is really helping to drive some of our results is the fact that in the US there is this you know, set in stone FEMA system to provide aid to states and localities uh, for natural disasters because that really provides a, a cushion uh, to, to entrepreneurial activity and, and just you know, people in general that allows uh, you know, normal uh, activity and behavior to, to, to happen sooner, you know, get back to the way things uh, were. So local level, um, you know, short run disasters are pretty bad for business, you know, I mean, it depends on the, the disaster to, the, to what extent, you know, but, you know, if we're talking about a hurricane or a, a, for, a wildfire that makes its way into a residential or commercial area or tornado, I mean, obviously there's immediate disruption to the local economy um, and, and, and it's bad for business. So, so there, there tends to be a negative business effect uh, at the immediate aftermath of a disaster. Um, in the long run, it's actually very hard to say uh, what the effect of natural disasters are um, on, on entrepreneurial activity and really just business activity in general um, within developed economies. I think if, if we're talking about you know, non-developed versus developing economies, or I'm sorry, developed versus developing economies, disasters are, are going to affect developing economies more, right? One of the reasons why we restricted our study to just US states is because we actually wanted to remove some of that heterogeneity that, you know, it's, it's hard to control for all the various ways um, that the countries uh, may or may not be able to handle natural disasters economically. Uh, in the US, because the US states all kind of fall under the same umbrella, we don't have to deal with as much of that, that potential. Now, certainly that reduces some of the, the external validity of our study. It ends up being a US state study. Um, but I think that this is, you know, part of, of, of the overall research was that, if your economy is good and, and you have relatively good governance structures and you have good age structures, it's actually hard to say what disasters do uh, to the economy uh, over the long run, um, which, you know, that's as an economist, that's that's kind of exciting to hear. Um, it's not exciting, you know, to, to be, you know, to hear about natural disasters, but it's exciting to hear that potentially, um, you know, the effects uh, might, might work both ways. Um, so, if we think about disasters and, and their, their role in terms of what they do. So the, the, again, immediate localized economic disruption, um, existing jobs are lost, people get their hours cut. Um, this causes physical barriers to re-entry. So sometimes roads are washed out or, or you know, infrastructure is, is beat up. And, and so literally where you had your business before, you can't have it, even if, even if you have the funds to, to rebuild. So there are physical barriers to kind of getting back to normal um, for disasters. 
the cleanup and repair sort of part of it um, is where you, you really start to first see the potential for, for entrepreneurial act activity. Because the fact is, is that in the cleanup and aftermath of a disaster, you need specific skills. You need people to put in labor hours to help clean up and, and repair these particular areas. And so that that alone has, you know, some at least relative positive um, economic effect. And again, we're we're not, you know, we're I, let me be clear. And, and any time that I mention that a disaster might have positive economic effects, I'm certainly not suggesting that a disaster is a good thing. I'm just suggesting that the way in which our economy reacts to a disaster um, may be, you know, not as negative as we might uh, think. Um, the other thing in the cleanup and repair stage is that there's this big influx of government money. So intergovernmental aid, usually coming from the federal government, piped through the states, and then the states dispersed out to localities. Um, and that really can't be sort of underappreciated in the context of the ability of these local economies and, and regional economies to get their feet back under them uh, shortly after this, after a disaster. Um, you know, the fact is, is that, you know, FEMA is much criticized in the U.S. Um, for, you know, specifically back the Hurricane Katrina. But when you look at FEMA relative to other countries in the world, it actually does a pretty good job um, in terms of its speed. Usually it's very quick to respond. Um, and, and that helps not just people's lives, but, you know, also uh, the, the sort of local economy. Then there's this sort of like local economic realignment. So when, when things start to go back to normal, they're not back to the way they used to be. They're different. Uh, that temporary labor influx starts to recede. So if, like, if you think about it in terms of like the old boom and bust oil towns, like people come in for the jobs because they're there. And then when the, you know, they're not digging the oil there anymore, they leave, right? And, and so that's something that you kind of have to think about as tempering any kind of positive economic effect. Um, and then the aid dries up. So there's less money for aid, uh, you know, unemployment insurance runs out for folks and, and they have to start looking for jobs maybe um, if they lost their job, uh, for example. Um, so th this there's a, a certain sense of like, okay, now things are going to move in a, in a particular direction, but not necessarily in the direction they were going before. Um, and then there's also the, the change to like long-term planning, public and, and private strategy changes, public, you know, zoning laws and, and where we build roads and, and where we build schools and things are going to change sometimes after natural disasters because we learn we shouldn't put them there. Uh, private strategy changes, right? Not just in, in the terms of like where you put your businesses, but also in thinking about long-run business uh, potential. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is that when you look in the literature, now there's a, a sense that uh, private interests are seeing disasters as this potential now, right, where, where you can become a business which is good at assisting localities and dealing with natural disasters. And so there is this private kind of business effect on, on disasters, which is already occurring. Um, in fact, a lot of FEMA money that comes from the federal government, the state, ends up going to, to private businesses for cleanup and repair. So it changes a little bit in terms of like what people think they can do now uh, for, for a job and, and, and to run a business. Um, so now, you know, what does this mean in the context of like entrepreneurship and, and that sort of thing? Um, Uh, okay, so yeah, there was a question here. Um, I'm going to save that question till the end, if you don't mind. That that, that would be easier for me. Uh, but yeah, if you want to put questions in the chat, please go ahead and do so. I would love to to take any and all questions. Um, but I'll just I'll get to that uh, at the end. But that was a good question, Arthur. By the way, um, and I do have an answer for you. <laughs> okay, um, so starting up, like, how does entrepreneurship uh, occur? Uh, in the literature on, of entrepreneurship, there's like two different types of entre entrepreneurship. There's like opportunity based and necessity-based. So opportunity-based is all about economic conditions, industrial conditions. Are there opportunities for people to start their own business? Are there opportunities for people to invent something, to, you know, start up something? Um, and that, that's, you know, again, that, that the word opportunity, you know, probably makes a lot of sense. And then there's also the necessity. Um, necessity entrepreneurship arises from a couple different places. There's skill mismatch, to like structural unemployment, you know, you can find yourself uh, not, you know, necessarily being good at, at what you need to be good at nowadays. So maybe you go and you start your own business uh, as a response to that. Um, and then there's also economic disruption. So when people lose their jobs um, or have hours cut, um, you know, there's a natural economization that occurs and people, you know, look for, for other employment. They, they look for other business. We saw this in COVID. One of the interesting things with COVID was that, you know, the side hustle, 
everybody started talking about side hustles. Well, like during COVID, people were starting businesses and things like that. So that's a good example of, of necessity-based entrepreneurship and, and probably also a little bit of opportunity-based entrepreneurship, right? I mean, think about, you know, how much uh, the bottom line of whatever company owns Zoom uh, they they probably uh, you know found a lot of opportunity during uh, the COVID pandemic, um, you know, and and in many respects that that sounds, um, <laughs> you know, it's very much kind of an economist thing to say. It sounds a little, uh, uh, you know, like we don't have a heart. But the truth is, is that you know you have to kind of think about the the economic system as what do we want? How do we want the economic system to respond? And and then the fact that there's this idea that the economic system can respond positively uh, to, to really negative things. Um, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's, it's something that we should, we should really be happy about. And, and it speaks to the, the strength of the U.S. economy. And it's, it speaks to, I think, also the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit of people, which, um, you know, frankly, in doing my research, I've done, read a lot of research about these individual cases. And, you know, I've, I've come to see entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activities. It's really like this beautiful thing. I mean, you have people that are really following their dreams in many circumstances, and it's not easy. It's that we don't make it easy on them uh, to start small businesses, as I said before. And so, yeah, that struggle is, is something that, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's there and it's real. And, you know, my hats off go off to the, the people that, that, you know, get into it. Um, it scares me uh, just thinking about it. Um, and the truth is, is that it's probably hard to disentangle these two completely. Um, we don't try to do that or anything. We, we sort of suggest that some of our findings seem to align well with opportunity based entrepreneurship and, and some with necessity, but we don't really try to disentangle them. And it's true that there's probably uh, some difficulty in doing that. So here we are to the actual thing that we did. Um, so I'm an empirical researcher. So everything I do is, is uh, econometric based uh, modeling. So what did we do? Um, we took a panel of 48 contiguous US states spanning the time 1970 through 2018. Um, we drop Hawaii and Alaska, um, mainly because, well, the research usually drops them. Uh, so why does the research drop them? Research drops them is because they're just so distinct. Um, the things that they endeavor, the things that, that affect them are so distinct from the other 48 states. Um, they basically end up being outliers. Uh, and so unfortunately for them, they, they get sent out of the sample, um, but it probably clears up some statistical concerns for us. So what we used uh, as a measure for entrepreneurship um, were these things called Kaufman indicators. And so the Kaufman indicators are, are really interesting. So I'm actually just gonna click on this real quick um, and show you the website. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool um, you know, foundation sort of that was created as a way to kind of measure entrepreneurship. And so they collect all of this data on entrepreneurship and all sorts of metrics and things like that. Uh, and yeah, so it's really interesting. So if you look at like the rate of new entrepreneurs um, that's percent of the population that start a new business. You'll see that, you know, for uh, the longest time, there was virtually no change. I mean, a little upward trend here, there, the downward trend. Um, this is really interesting, right? So the percent of the population that sort of starts their own business saw a dramatic increase uh, in 2020, pointing to uh, a little bit of a spoiler alert on some of the results that we find. Now, our particular paper doesn't go to, to COVID. Our, our paper stops in 2018, but I do think that, that this is at least part of our story as well. Um, opportunity share of new entrepreneurs. Um, this is very sort of like relatively cyclical, uh, but there's all sorts of different measures and things like that. So it becomes a good way for, you know, people to kind of understand what's going on in entrepreneurship, you know, from a, from a U.S. state level uh, perspective. All right. So what do we look at? We looked at things like rate of new entrepreneurs, um, opportunity share, uh, which is percent of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who start uh, a business, um, start up early job creation, start up early survival, and then a summary index, which is just an average of, of all of these things. And we look at these different measures because we were interested in the heterogeneous effects of natural disasters on entrepreneurship. Um, we do have the summary index um, as a measure of the general effect, uh, but we wanted to look at to see if maybe uh, disasters had differential effects on, on the different things. And, and again, spoiler alert, they do. Um, so there you go. Um, for disaster data, uh, the most sort of utilized data is the Sheldis data, which comes from Arizona State University's spatial hazard and events. Um, for controls, we use things like business climate, um, credit access, like liquidity really matters in terms of starting a small business. So we control for those things. Um, demographic factors, things like population, prime age population, uh, which we got from census. So again, just trying to control for those factors that we think are going to get in the way of the relationship between a disaster uh, and entrepreneurship. Um, 
And, you know, there's, there's a lot of additional things that we, you know, thought about controlling for. One of the things that we, um, you know, looked at was insurance, uh, specifically, uh, you know, crop insurance and fire insurance. Um, but it, it, those, those inclusions didn't seem to matter very much. And so ultimately, you know, what we control for, we feel uh, relatively good about. Um, so this is just a summary of statistics. This is the, the slide that no one really ever pays attention to uh, in presentations, but we just keep putting them in there. Uh, I don't even know why really, but uh, here's our summary statistics. So you can sort of, sort of see some general things and, and there you go. Um, here's the model. So I'll explain the model a little bit. Um, the dependent variable, left-hand side variable, this is those various measures of entrepreneurship that we were talking about before, uh, the Kaufman indicators. Um, we put a lag of the dependent variable on the left-hand side, so the dynamic panel model. Um, this is just accounting for the fact that it's likely there's some sort of time trend uh, in the entrepreneurship data. We run models both with and without that dynamic component um, just to test for robustness, and the results are not that much different. Um, this is a measure of the disaster damage, so the actual size of the disasters. Uh, one of the weaknesses of the early literature in disasters was it was basically all based on like indicator variables, like binary, did a disaster happen or, or did it not? We looked at actual like monetary damages from disasters. Um, and what we did is we looked at various lag structures. So we looked at damages, like the effect of damages in the first year, the effect of damages in the second year, third year, fourth year, because we, you know, assumed that there was this uh, potential for disaster damages to have effects over time, not just in the immediate year, but in the aftermath. You know, that, that again, that's sort of what I referred to as the sort of realignment stage. Um, and uh, so then we have our control variables here. Um, we include, this is a fixed effects model. So we use both state level fixed effects as well as time fixed effects. Um, and, you know, as with any, uh, you know, state level study like this, you're worried about endogeneity, you know, specifically, you're worried that the relationship between disaster damages and entrepreneurship is just unique to each state and so unique that you couldn't ever possibly control for, for all those factors, right? That, that's what we're concerned about. So we, we looked at a Durbin Q Watson specification, which basically runs in uh, instrumental variables uh, set up um, to test for endogeneity concerns. We didn't find any major endogeneity concerns. So again, the, the concern here is that um, we could never control for enough factors to get a clean estimation of the effect of disaster damage on entrepreneurial activity, but running some statistical tests, some of those fears, uh, at least some of them uh, are alleviated. Okay, so this is the, the, you know, we have a lot of tables in the paper, but this is the table that matters. Um, so this is uh, total da damages scaled by state income. We also scaled by population just as a form of robustness checks, um, but uh, I, I should have these highlighted. So I'm gonna highlight these. I don't know if this is, I'm, I'm wondering in my mind if this is actually the professional thing to do. Uh, but <laughs> the big ticket items here is uh, these effects here. Um, what this tells us is that uh, just in terms of like entrepreneurship, so just the summary index, it, it seems like within about three to four years, disasters have positive effects on state level entrepreneurship, um, that there seems to be this positive effect coming from, from disasters. And of course, you know, as the disaster gets bigger, the, the, the positive effects uh, tend to get uh, bigger as well. So that's like the overall effect. So the overall effect is positive. Um, now, uh, the more uh, the sort of when we disaggregate those effects a little bit. So if you look at like the rate of new entrepreneurs, uh, again, very positive. In fact, the, the, these effects are even larger than the effects before. So it seems like disasters sort of create or, or encourage people to start new businesses or create the, the requirements for them to, right? So opportunity versus necessity entrepreneurship. So we don't know necessarily if this is people who started new businesses because they wanted to or because they had to, uh, but we know that, that, you know, the rate of new entrepreneurs seems to very positively react um, to natural disasters. Um, skipping over to some of the negative effects that are interesting. So if you look at like survival rate, um, so the survival rate of, of new startups does decline. So the whole the story of natural disasters and entrepreneurship isn't completely rosy. Um, there are some negative effects as well um, to, to be concerned about. So if, if all of our results came out positive, that was, I would I, you know, question that quite a bit. I would be more worried that our results were, were biased in some way. The fact that we see these heterogeneous effects uh, is, is in a way encouraging um, that, that our model sort of accurately uh, estimates these various things. Um, you know, so I think it's interesting to look at these two effects 
uh, beside each other, um, that effect, and then these two effects. So again, notice that all of the effects seem to happen in that three to four to five year range, which is interesting. So it takes a while for the disaster to kind of affect things, um, although it does seem to affect the create uh, survival relatively early on, which would make sense, right? So that early economic disruption causes small businesses to be put in a more risky situation. Well, but because small businesses are put in a more risky situation, this creates opportunity for other small businesses to be created, right? And this is the, again, the nature of like the way that, you know, an economic system where businesses can kind of enter and exit markets, this is what you want to see. You want to see people seeing opportunities in, you know, relatively negative situations because ultimately their response ends up making the, the situation uh, more, po more positive than it otherwise would be. Um, so yeah, the, the, the big ticket item here is that when we look at um, the effect of, of uh, natural disasters on entrepreneurship. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically put this in, uh, you know, much more, because those numbers didn't mean anything, right? They were just, I just wanted you to pay attention to the positive and negative. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those numbers and then I'm going to convert them into, you know, values that make a lot more sense. So for a billion dollar event, um, now to give you an idea of, of events, Hurricane Katrina was a, for Louisiana, was a $100 billion event. It cost a hundred billion dollars uh, in cleanup and repairs and things like that. Hurricane Andrew was something like a twenty-five billion dollar event for Florida. Uh, Superstorm Sandy was something like a, I think around a forty billion dollar event. Um, you know, so that gives you an idea. So the, you know, these effects, um, you know, in, in some sense, scale up a little bit. So billion dollar events uh, raised startup job creation by about seven point one percent. Now that sounds like a lot, but one of the things you have to know is that startup job creation is relatively small. So it's 7.1%, but the number is relatively small. Basically, what this means is that out of 1,000 people, uh, instead of two people uh, starting a, a new business, we expect four people. Basically, there's a, a, an increase of, of you know, two, a little less than two people uh, in, 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 the, in the context of the 7.1%, which may seem small, right? Every 1,000 people, you get like one and a half new entrepreneurs, but, you know, in a big city, uh, in, in regional economies, that's that's certainly a relatively large number. Um, reduces opportunity share by 1%. So it does seem to, that the billion dollar events cause enough economic disruption that there is a, a destabilization uh, a little bit of, of the relative economic system. So again, it's not all a rosy uh, story. As I mentioned, reduced startup survival by 0.7%. And then the, the big ticket kind of headline, if we look at this from a net effect, uh, it, we, we predict that billion dollar events will raise the overall level of entrepreneurship activity by 5.3%. Um, meaning that the way in which entrepreneurship responds to natural disasters seems to be on net positive. Um, which again, when you at first may seem very surprising, was sort of surprising to us, but when you start to think about entrepreneurship and especially in the context of like the most recent COVID pandemic, what is considered entrepreneurship? I mean, it's probably easier than it's ever been to start a small business just from a perspective of, you know, you can have a website and you can put all your stuff on the website. You don't have to have a brick and mortar store anymore. Um, and so that alleviates some of those barriers to entry that I was mentioning before in terms of entrepreneurial activity. So it may be the case that over time these effects, uh, you know, grow uh, potentially. Um, and I guess, and as I mentioned, ro uh, results are robust to scaling uh, and dynamic linear regression. Um, so what's the story here, right? Well, I think there's a creative destruction story here. I think uh, disasters cause existing businesses to be put more at risk for dying, but that in of itself causes there to be additional opportunities for people who are thinking about starting small businesses. So yeah, there's, there's economic misery and there's people who have their lives, you know, uprooted and, and, you know, destroyed in certain circumstances, but in the context of the, of the economic system, there is, seems to be this positive response. Um, you know, opportunity versus necessity. Um, you know, if we want there to be more opportunity based entrepreneurship, we sort of know what we need to do. Um, and we know that the natural disasters may put that at risk in the future. It's also the case that like, it's not necessarily that good of a thing that all of the entrepreneurship is necessity based. Like we don't always want people to be starting new businesses because they feel like they have to. Um, you know, that's, you know, it, it's good, but it's, you know, we, you know, in a way it's better for the economic system for those businesses to be started, you know, with, with a little bit more support and, and, and things like that. 
um, you know, there's a disaster or a carrot or a stick, you know, to, to entrepreneurship activity. Um, it, it, I think it's both at different times. And again, I think it, it matters how you set things up. It matters how you design your aid systems. It matters how you help localities deal with their disasters. I think that that matters a lot. One of the, the interesting studies that I read early on was if you looked at wildfires out west, they seem to actually have a stimulatory effect on the economies that affected them. And the researchers said it was because after the wildfires, there was an influx of what virtually amounted to fiscal stimulus. So when FEMA sent money to the affected areas, um, they were all, all often sending a lot of money that had a, a large stimulatory effect on the local economy, such that it actually appeared as if wildfires were having this positive economic effect. Now, again, it's not suggesting that a wildfire is a good thing, but it's suggesting that um, if, the, if the government steps in and helps, um, that there is this sort of business reaction, this private business reaction, uh, which is, is good. Um, and aid matters a lot, um, as I said. Um, it's an important finding in the context of resiliency, right? One of the questions we have about climate change is how resilient our economies, how resilient our uh, social systems. And I think the, one of the things that I came out of this, this research was that I felt better about, you know, the U.S. economy in the sense that um, it seemed like our structures were, you know, not perfect, that they certainly could use some help. Um, I certainly don't agree that we should be cutting FEMA funding, which is a very popular opinion right now in Washington. I, I don't agree with that. Um, if anything, there should be more because um, it, it seems to help. Um, but at the same time, you have to be careful. There has been mismanagement. There certainly has been corruption uh, in, in FEMA money as well. So, you know, these things have to be uh, considered. Um, but again, it's, it's a nice resiliency story. Um, and it's, you know, something to, in, in the bleak picture of climate change, it perhaps is something that we can uh, feel at least a little good about. And, you know, now what does this mean for other countries? What does this mean for less developed countries? It's hard to say because, you know, the U.S. economy is, you know, the strongest economy in the world um, in many respects. Um, you know, as much as we may disagree, we have one of the better governance structures in terms of like how much actually gets done. Um, again, people don't believe that, but if you actually look at the data, it's suggested. So, yeah, I think that our results matter for developed economies. I think they highlight the fact that if you're a less developed economy, you're probably not going to see uh, these sorts of positive findings. And, and that's certainly what we've seen uh, in previous literature. Um, like I said, optimistic finding and a pessimistic topic. You know, it, it sort of it is what it is. Um, and the next research. So, you know, where we're going forward is we're um, now we're looking at some some local uh, research. We're looking at county level studies. Um, you know, we do state level research in this paper. And when you think about it, it, you know, I would not be able to disagree with you if you suggested to me that statistically speaking, it might be hard to say that a hurricane in, you know, southeast Florida is going to affect the, the entire state or, or, you know, a tornado in, in, in uh, Texas. You know, now we took as much care as we could, statistically speaking, to deal with all of the concerns of that, and we feel pretty confident that we did, but we want to look at the county level data. We want to see if we find similar results at the county level data. The only problem with county level is that the entrepreneurship rates aren't as cleanly collected there. So we're probably going to have to look at some individual case studies, maybe looking at some regional uh, situations and things like that. Um, and I think that the next step, um, you know, for the research is to look at the, the state level experience um, and, and really ask ourselves, you know, how can we improve, how can we make this even, you know, better? Like, if we're going to have natural disasters, and they're going to occur, and there's not really anything we can do about that, like their occurrence, what we can do is we can prepare ourselves for them. You know, so we build our infrastructure in a particular way. We build our buildings in a particular way. Well, we should treat our small businesses in a particular way. We should think about the role that small businesses and entrepreneurial activity play, not only in our broader economy, but also in the aftermath of a natural disaster. Um, the fact is, is that if you look at who does the cleanup and repair, um, what you find at the end of those FEMA dollars is a private company, uh, oftentimes a small business. And so, you know, while... Uh, some may, you know, feel a little, you know, icky about the idea that a company is making money off of, you know, cleaning up a disaster. The fact is, is that, you know, there are tremendous benefits socially from that. And in many respects, the U.S. system works a lot better than other systems because the public-private partnership is, is stronger here. Um, there's an existing sort of history with it. Um, it's sort of a part of the sort of American system. And that's one thing that, that makes us, I think, a little bit more resilient. Um, so, all right, that's, 
That's it. That's that's the end of my talk. That's my last slide. 